Agents, should you get one? Do you need one? What am I getting myself into? This is one of my favorite videos to make because it's about a topic that isn't talked about a lot and it will save you both time and money. The answer in my opinion is a big, confident, believe me when I tell you, no. With that, there are a few reasons to get one and we will definitely talk about those, but there are far more reasons not to, which is what a bulk of this video is about. And as we move forward, just know to make the decision that's right for you. And to help you make your decision, we are going to be breaking down a contract pitched to me by an agent who wanted to represent me. I did not end up signing. And we're gonna break down most of these paragraphs together. To start, let's talk about why I didn't sign. The biggest reason is that I felt that there is no person on earth more motivated to find me a job than me. Most agents don't take reporters who don't do a good job. They only sign people that they know they can place in jobs. So just by virtue of the fact that an agent is interested in signing you should be enough encouragement to not sign with them because they've essentially just told you that you're marketable and all of the agents who wanted to represent me came to me. Are there reporters that go out in search of agents? Yes, there are. So it can go either way. But again, going back to the job search, no one's gonna work harder than you are, so why not just do it all on your own for free? Because that's what I did. So now, with that, let's talk about cost. This part has always been preposterous to me. And it's why it's so important that I show you this specific contract. This is real. The agent wanted 9% of my annual salary. Yeah, every year. And that's in addition to an extra $500 that they wanted to send tapes out on my behalf. I was already doing that. And so will you. And please know, this day and age, if this fee is still in the contract, it's free money to the agent because as you are well aware, all resume tapes are online. So, back to this 9%. To me, that was insane, but actually somewhat around the industry average of roughly 8 to 10%. Though there were a couple of agents that I knew about who would do it at 5 Either way, let's break down the 9%. So, now you are well aware, because you know of my first job at ABC News Channel 20, that I was making $22,000 a year. So, if I had used an agent to get that job, I would have owed that agent almost $2,000 every year. And because your contract will probably be the standard two-year contract, I would have had to have paid that agent $4,000 total. That's insane to me. All because most local news jobs, you can get yourself. Definitely your first, second, and third jobs in honestly all of them. I have been very transparent on how I got all of my own and how I got actual job offers from high markets. Market 50 being Memphis and of course market 5, Dallas. All on my own, no agent help. And also too, in talking about help, the tape I made myself, I never got any help from an agent on that. In fact, some of the agents I was talking to, they probably would not have supported it being that different. They would have called it too cute or too out of the box or whatever because their clients who they were placing, they weren't placing that way. And the tape I made myself with no help from an agent also got me calls from Cleveland, Ohio and that other station that called me that I don't remember because again, that was over the phone. So this is all to make you ask yourself, why am I paying a stranger 4,000 over two years or again, 9% one year and 9% the other year, whatever that equals out to be, for making a couple of phone calls? Because that's really what they're doing. They're calling their friends in the business or people that maybe they have some relationships with. You're paying thousands of dollars for a phone call. And again, no one is going to advocate for you better than you. The only advantage sometimes to having an agent is if they know the news director. Maybe you get looked at before they look at somebody else. 
But honestly, and here's the truth about that, news directors look at a lot of tapes. They may not like a lot of tapes, but they look at them. And here's what I mean. I've been asked to sit in while news directors are watching tapes, and I've been asked for a lot of input at various levels of the hiring process. Here's what's never happened. I've never sat down with the news director and them say to me, man, Andrew, I wish on the last hire that I had watched just one more tape because that person would have been so much better than the person before who I settled on. They watch everything. Maybe not for long. Again, not for long. They may not like you, but they're going to see you. And I'm proof of that. I've never gotten hidden or buried in the stack of resume tapes. The trick is to keep their attention once they start watching. But even with that, if you've been slowly getting to know a handful of news directors at the stations you want to work for a year or two in advance, or you know someone who works there, they'll tell the news director to take a look at you, and again, they're going to do it for free, not $2,000 a year for walking across the hall and going into their boss's office. So, I've personally never understood why agents at the local news level are worth the money. And also, too, it just didn't fit my personality either. I was always very active in looking for jobs, networking at conferences, and of course, award shows. You know me by now. Like I was motivated. I was out there working it. And with all of that, having an agent can get worse. Much worse. Look at the term section, meaning how long your relationship is with the agent. Here's the framework this contract sets up. The contract says that if you hire the agent, both you and the agent have two years to find you a job. Yes, both you and the agent have two years to find you a job. If you're still unemployed after two years of searching, then the relationship ends. And of course it does. If neither one of you can find a job in 24 months, it makes no sense for the agent to attach themselves to you. There's no way that that outcome actually happens because no agent's going to sign you if they don't think they can place you. So this whole thing that there is some magical out after two years, it doesn't exist. It's false security. And even to pull that lever, you had to have gone unemployed, which is nuts. But even with that, this part I just explained, that's actually the good part because it gets worse. Should you find employment, meaning you on your own, you've hired the agent, they're out searching over here, but you go out and you search over here and find something really good and broker it on your own and do all of it while they were over here doing whatever, they still get their 9%. And they get their 9% for every year that you're there up to five years. And that five years resets itself with every station you go to. So now you're probably asking, Andrew, reporting contracts are usually two years long. So why are we talking about five year intervals? Well, because the agent is trying to lock in as much future money right now as possible. And they do it like this. Their stance is, well, we found you that one job. And let's take, for example, Dallas. So I go in, I broker Dallas, boom, new station, new job, great. They want 9% a year beyond my first contract if they can broker that now. So I go and I sign my two-year contract with Dallas. Pay them 9% year one, 9% year two. Now let's say, I want to stay in Dallas and maybe I get a little bit of a pay raise. It's not going to be a huge monumental jump, but let's say I get a little bit of a raise. Well, now in my new two-year contract, adding on a year three and a year four, I still owe them nine and nine. And should I stay somehow for a fifth year, if that is ever brokered, I owe them nine more on top of that. So. For the job, they never got me never having done any work and there only being one negotiation at the beginning, they all of a sudden get 9% of a $62,000 contract that's almost or roughly about $6,000 a year 
for having done nothing. And let's say that they did something, it was making a phone call. And we will get very specific with these numbers a little later in this video. This is to illustrate to you that they are the overall winner, not you. Now, some agents would say, but Andrew, I'll negotiate the second two-year contract and get you, the reporter, more money. And yeah, technically, they're right. They can go and negotiate, but again, that's one that you can probably handle yourself. It's going to be a $5,000 or $10,000 bump. It's not going to be some big monumental leap that you make when you go from market to market. Now, if you're changing a job title from reporter to anchor reporter, or, well, I should say it like this, from a one-person band to a reporter, or a reporter to anchor reporter, or anchor reporter to anchor, the raises get larger as you obviously move up in title in that same market. But either way, you don't need an agent to broker that. You're gonna know people in the market. You're gonna be able to know what you should be asking for. An agent at that point, once you're settled in your market, in terms of gathering information, is gonna be useless to you. And here's the next thing, and this is my favorite part. When I found this out, I was on fire. This next point is why I make this video for you. And that is that news directors aren't intimidated by agents. There is no negotiation. It's all a myth. And in fact, later in this video, I am going to explain to you in detail how the news director controls the agent. Quickly here, let's touch on anchoring. And as we've talked about before, those are at least three-year contracts. And I've walked you through that five-year cycle. But here's where the math gets weird. And for the sake of the agent. So you're in contract one. Your first three-year contract is the anchor reporter. And you decide, this is a cool gig. I like the market. I like the pay. I like the work. I would like a second three-year contract. And the station agrees to that as well. And you sign this second three-year contract. You now owe that agent not only for the fifth year, but also for the sixth year because there is a clause in this contract that says whichever is greater, five years or two contracts. And two three-year contracts make that sixth year. Yeah, these documents read like math word problems. Now, if you got confused by that last anchor example, that's actually okay because I want you to know that these documents are written to be confusing. It is not you. They're meant to hide information in plain sight. And also, please know that if you don't understand something, ask. And if the answer the person gives you still doesn't make any sense, walk away. Never let someone try to speak stupid onto you. It's always the other person's responsibility to explain things in a way that makes sense. That's what customer service is. And unfortunately, most of the time, it's horrible. Again, never let someone apply pressure onto you to sign something you don't understand. If they are, they're trying to take something from you, hide something from you. And once you sign, you're responsible for what you've signed. So before you do, ask all of the questions you want. Then, and only then, make the decision that's right for you. And by the way, this goes for any kind of a contract, an apartment lease, a mortgage, any kind of document. If it doesn't make sense, there's probably a reason why, walk away. Especially after you've asked questions and all you're getting back are bad answers. Another reason why I'm showing you this contract is also to show you just how hard it is to fire an agent. And we'll dive deeper later into that. I just want you to know right now in the video that that is hard as well. So now let's review some of these numbers. Here is what I could have owed my agent if I had been in a contract with them. And again, the example is the NBC5 job in Dallas, the one I got on my own. And again, it wouldn't have mattered that I got it on my own because the agent still would have demanded their 9%. All of the feelings that you're feeling as you're going through this math in your head, they are very, very real. So, 
Dallas paid me $62,000 a year. So 62,000 times 0 0.09 for that 9% comes to be about $5,500. Over five years, that's almost $28,000 for something they did no work for. And let's say for a moment that maybe they had the connection to the news director, which I still don't think is worth paying $30,000 for on the local level. They would have said, hey, I negotiated the contract. And yeah, technically that's true, but the deal you would have gotten wouldn't have been any better than you could have gotten on your own. And here are those numbers, because the agent really could not have negotiated a much better deal than the one that I did. Now, they might have known that a reporter with five to six years in that market actually starts at $75,000. And maybe they could have brought the news director to $65,000. And again, the original ask, the original pitch to me was $58,000. And then I asked them for that $4,000 more we had talked about in a separate video, and that's how we got to $62,000. Maybe the agent could have gotten them to $65,000. I truly don't believe the agent could have gotten them any higher because at that point, the news director could have just hired somebody else. And again, I only had four years experience. Somebody making 75 has five to six. So at that point, when you're reaching that income level, the news director might say, this is getting too complicated. It's taking too long, so to speak and then just go on to somebody else because you know the dozens and dozens of tapes and believe me, I think there were probably hundreds for that job because it was market five, the news director's in control and not the agent. And also here, do the math. Let's say that I did lose 3,000 negotiating on my own. I could have had 65 but only got 62. It still doesn't make up for the $5,500 a year that this agent was going to get based off of $62,000. I would much rather take the $3,000 hit than not be in this long financial relationship for somebody who's not doing anything. Now, this next point that we're going to talk about is going to underscore, reinforce everything up to this point. You're going to meet, you're going to run into anchors and reporters who say, well, I don't want to be the bad cop. I don't want to negotiate with my boss. I don't want to be the one that's got to bring up money. Here's the thing. They should learn how to negotiate. In this setting, it's easy. And the reason why they don't want to do that is they have this mindset to where they think that they want the boss to always think of them in a nice way because they see negotiation as combative and it's really not. It's just a skill that nobody's taught in school at the elementary level, at the high school level, or even at the collegiate level. And when I say they don't want to be the bad cop, they want to be the nice person, that is a direct quote from an anchor friend of mine. And again, a dear friend a talented person, I respect their journalism and their skill. I just don't respect their beliefs when it comes to negotiation. It's something you can learn, and by learn, it's gonna be one or two things in this video. And again, by learning, it's awareness. It's this next story that's gonna teach you how to do it because it's gonna give you a lay of the land. And here's that story. And please know, it comes from a news director in a top five market. I know a handful of them, so no, this comes from a solid source and is 100% true. So, the news director and I were at the same conference together and they were on a panel of other news directors. And a college student bravely stood up and asked, do I get an agent? Do I need one? Can the agent get me more money than just me on my own? It was a great question and I'm so glad that somebody at the beginning of their career had the courage to ask, to ask truth to power, so to speak. The news director I knew said, no, and I'll tell you why. Here's how I, as a news director, negotiate with agents. So, to start in this particular market as a reporter, you've probably got five to six years experience. 
which means I'm going to pay you $75,000. So what I do is I tell the agent, yes, I want to hire your client. The salary is $75,000, no more. It's $75,000 solid. So here's what I recommend you tell your client. Tell them I'm interested. Don't tell them the offer is 75. Tell them the offer is 70. That's because they'll probably think about it for 24 to 48 hours or who knows, they might take the 70 immediately and then I've saved $5,000. But either way, here's really what you should do. Two to three days later, call your client back. Tell them that you negotiated with me, that you went back and forth on their behalf and that you got me to give them $5,000 more for the total of $75,000. So you as an agent look like a hero to your client. That's how it's done. That's why my friend whose skill I respect, and there's multiple friends like this too, anchors and reporters who don't want to negotiate. That's why that belief is false. There is no conflict. It's not combative. The number that a news director has in mind in their budget, that's the number. It's going to be a very unique skill set that somebody would have that would make that news director pull money from something else to inflate a salary. That is rare. And quite honestly, something I've never heard a news director talk about. I've heard of it in the public sector with companies that make lots of money. So yeah, I guess it could happen in news, but I've never actually seen it happen. And the term negotiate in a business setting is a completely different skill set. When I heard that, when I heard that story, my belief that you don't need an agent became so much stronger because not only did I have my story of success, somebody who I respected and knew and runs a major market just said, hey, here's the behind the scenes that you wouldn't know about. And what she had told me, I had never been told before by a news manager. That is how tight this advice is. And also too, again, the agent is only being paid for who they know. They can't get you more money at the local level. And remember, you're paying them that 9% a year. Again, I told you I was on fire about all this. All they can possibly do is get you in front of a news director and believe me when I tell you, you can do that by yourself. You don't need an agent at the local level. The only thing you need is someone in your network to give you an idea of what the salaries are in that market and just arrange. Is it 45 to 50,000, 50,000 to 55, or is it 70 to 75? And of course, this is always based on job title. Anchors will always be paid more than reporters, and reporters are typically usually paid more than one person bands. Now that you know this, you can take it from here. So let's talk about going network because this is completely different. So you're at a point in your career where you want to start applying to be at the national network. This is where you may very well want an agent. This is a different game. My friends who report at network level hired agents to specifically find those jobs and negotiate. And these jobs are competitive. Therefore, you're going to want an agent. You want someone fighting for you. But even before that, you need that person because they're the one with the relationships with the hiring executives. And they also know what those people want so they can coach you on how to do the kinds of stories in the kinds of ways that those executives want. It's going to be hard for you to get an executive's attention on your own. I have no idea how to do it and the people who have been successful at getting to network again have hired agents for it. The agent will also have a really good idea if the salary being offered to you is a low ball offer or a solid offer. The agent also knows the skills the network is looking for. Again, network is a whole different game. And I'm told by my friends at network that they specifically hired agents who had this experience 
and then specifically task them to find network jobs. And they both say it's worth it. So with that, one more thing I want to point out, and that is while we're talking about networks, is that there are two tiers of networks, so to speak. There are the big network news operations, known as the big four, and you know what those are. ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. What you may not know is that each of those networks has a second tier that feeds into that. So to use a baseball analogy, it could be considered the farm league. But please know, great work is done at this level daily, and that work can easily make it into a network newscast. And again, each network has their own tier, and they are ABC News 1, NBC News Channel, CBS Newspath, and Fox News Edge. At the time of this recording, two people I work with in Dallas work at them. Mola Langhi works at CBS Newspath, as does Omar Villafranca. At any moment, they can be flown anywhere in the country or around the world. They do national stories that air on national news. In addition to the network live shots they do, they may also do some additional live shots for local stations as well. Back when I produced the Fox newscasts and the ABC newscasts in Springfield, I would sometimes take reports from reporters then doing what Mola and Omar are doing now. And navigating that opportunity, that transition, is something you'll probably want an agent for. And again, if you're looking at that level, make sure that the agent you are looking at is currently representing people at that level of job. And as you begin this journey, and this one is a big journey and one that continues, it by far is, as they say in politics, the show that never ends. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'll see you in the next video.